Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. So I've really wanted to bring this case to you for a couple of days now. It is about an Iowa uh, serial killer that possibly um, would make him the most prolific serial killer in America if this all turns out to be true. And um, I've been seeing it for a couple of days now, wanting to cover it. And I'm finally getting around to it, but um, I've been eager to tell you guys about it. So let's get into it. I'm going to push play on this video for you real quick and um, let it play through. And then I, I'm going to read it. But this this site, um, Newsweek, is where the information originally got released. So this is who the interview and the information got dropped first. So that's why I'm starting here. Now from one of the first to report this story, Navid Jamali. He's a Newsweek editor-at-large and author of How to Catch a Russian Spy. He was one of the reporters exclusively on site when cadaver dogs searched the area where Lucy Studi says her father buried bodies. Navita, how did you come across the story and decide that this person, Lucy, uh, Lucy Studi, the daughter who's alleging her father was a serial killer, is credible? Yeah, Anderson, it's a great question. Um, this started off, as many of these stories do, it was a tip. And it went to my colleague, Eric Firkinoff, who then asked me to sort of fact check it. And look, Anderson, as it is with these stories, it comes down to one person. And really, it came down to a conversation where I sat down with Lucy in person. And, you know, I find her story, frankly, credible. Why hasn't anyone really investigated what Lucy has said in, in the past? So Lucy, one of the things that makes Lucy so credible, Anderson, is that for 45 years, she has been telling the same story consistently. And we found this in evidence in some of the early records that we've obtained. And it's something that the sheriff who is leading this investigation has told us as well. So why it hasn't happened is really, I think, it's an important question. And I think in Lucy's case, she had sort of four things working against her. One, when this allegedly happened, she was a child. Two, she was poor. And three, as she told it later on, you know, she was a woman, and we, we understand how law enforcement in many cases just dismisses the claims of women. And, of course, the fourth thing, which is we have yet to find a body or a name associated with this, even though she says very credibly that she saw these bodies being disposed of. Um, you know, we have yet to find those uh, elusive bodies. She has an older sister who has said she doesn't believe what Lucy is saying, correct? That is I'm going to actually take you guys through the article a little bit. That way you guys kind of know what's going on, okay? Just because I feel like you might get a little lost in this if I'm only playing the video and you're like, I don't know who these are, what's going on, okay? So we'll come back to that. But for 45 years, Lucy Studi told anyone who would listen that her father had murdered scours of young women and buried them with the help of his children. Um, no one believed her. Cadaver dogs have now pinpointed suspected human remains at the spot she identified in a remote stretch of western Iowa, investigators told Newsweek. Quote, I know where the bodies are buried, Lucy Studi told Newsweek, whose reports were at the scene of the investigation in the scrub outside Terman, Iowa. She recalled how her father, Donald Dean Studi, would direct her and her siblings to help him as he transported bodies using a wheelbarrow in the warmer months and a toboggan in winter. He would just tell us we had to go to the well. And I knew what that meant, Studi said. Every time I went to the well or into the hills, I didn't think I was coming down. I thought he would kill me because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. As he dumped the bodies into the well, they would pile dirt and lie on top, she said. If further investigation confirms the story, it could show that her father was one of the most prolific known serial killers in American history. Studi believes her father killed 50 to 70 women over three decades. He died in March 2013 at the age of 75. And this is the image of her out there with, um, you've got the sheriff, then this is the dog handler, and then this is her. Right. She was joined at the scene of the investigation by Fremont County Sheriff Kevin Estrop, I'm going to destroy his name, I, I don't know, um, two deputies, a dog handler, and his two dogs. Quote, I believe her 100% that there's bodies in there, Estrop told Newsweek. 
with love tattooed across the knuckles of one hand and hate across the other, Donald Dean Studi is suspected by law enforcement authorities to have lured women, most of them sex workers or transients, picked up in nearby uh, Omaha, Nebraska, to his five acres of forested hills and farmland before killing them. Studi said her father not only made sure his children knew what he was doing, but forced them to help with the burials. She remembered him saying of one victim, quote, this bitch deserved it. Most of the women had dark or darkish hair, she said. All were white, and she guessed that most, except for a 15-year-old runaway, were in their 20s or 30s. Studi now lives under her married name, and Newsweek agreed to her request not to publish it. Dig, 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 Studi repeated again and again at the scene as the dogs moved from place to place through the dried undergrowth. Odor of decomposition. The cadaver dogs trained to detect human remains went directly to the spots where Studi had said since she was a child that bodies had been buried. And they went without being led by their handler, Jim Peters, who runs Samaritan Detection Dogs and did Friday Search Pro Bono. One of the dogs signaled likely human remains by barking, the other by sitting still where remains were potentially located. The dogs, Australian cattle dogs, or healer, healers, I don't know, heller, heller, whatever, hellers, um, called Jojo and Jedi, scented remains at four locations with the last getting multiple hits where bodies might be buried. Quote, today told me that there is the odor of human decomposition in the area, said Peters. More work needs to be done to confirm that. I feel pretty good about what I saw from the dogs, but I'm not going to hang my hat on that. The science of cadaver dogs raises doubts for some people in criminal justice and forensic science. Scientific studies have shown mixed results for their effectiveness and that their ability to detect remains can depend on time since death soil composition and moisture levels, as well as the individual dogs and their trained training and handling. Quote, I really think that there's bones there, said Ashdrop. It's hard for me to believe that two dogs would hit in the exact same places and be false. We don't know what it is. The settlers were up there. There was Indian country up there as well, but I tend to believe Lucy, he said. Right now, we don't even have a bone. According to the dogs, this is a very large burial site. The Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation is expected on Monday at the hard to reach location marked only by dirt roads, brush and livestock. The next step would be to use sonar where the land allows it, and then dig the sites to search for human remains. Peters, an investigator said, many of the victims were buried in the 90s in, in the 90 to 100 foot well clothed and wearing jewelry, Studi said. She said her father kept gold teeth as trophies. What? Quote, all I want is to get these sites dug up and to bring closure to people and to give these women a proper burial, said Studi. The lie with which the bodies had been buried uh, can act as a preservative of remains instead of speeding decomposition. She and investigators told Newsweek, it also hides the smell. Um, built with close cropped hair. I think it's supposed to say studi there, but I, I think they spelled it wrong maybe. Um, showed little emotion at the scene. She described herself as a cold person detached. Studi said her father, quick to anger and routinely drunk, would stab and shoot people but his preferred method of killing was smashing or kicking in the heads of the women inside a trailer in which they lived on the property. It is unclear whether Lucy's siblings have been cooperative with the authorities. Her brother died by suicide at 39. Studi said over the years, she told her story to teachers, priests, and law enforcement all over Iowa and Nebraska trying to get something done. She said the trauma of the abuse upbringing, abusive upbringing and being forced to take part and covering the bodies won't settle until the truth is told. No one would listen to me, Studi said. The teacher said family matters should be handled at fam as a family, and law enforcement has said they couldn't trust the memory of a child. I was just a kid then, but I remember it all. Lifelong criminal and murderer. My father was a lifelong criminal and murderer, Studi said. She said 
Donald Studi, who used multiple aliases and was born Donald Dean Studi without the E, would run drugs and guns with others, hiding them in hollowed out trees, then trucking them across state lines with frequent visits to Arkansas. He passed through inspection sites with ease, she said, by having his children in the seat of the truck with him. Wow. Records Newsweek was initially able to obtain showed that Donald spent time in prison in Missouri in 1950s for petty larceny and that he was jailed in Omaha in 1989 for a drunken driving offense. The sheriff said that he had routinely been in trouble with the police who never went to the trailer the family lived in alone because they were weary of him. Newsweek has requested files from law enforcement agencies, including the FBI. Donald Studi was a perpetually in debt, indebted gambler who would pick the one bad horse or dog out of a hundred, his daughter said. She said her father also stole from many of the mechanic trucking and other jobs that he held over the years. Studi said her father had two wives who had died and he had tried on at least two occasions to take his own life. According to police records, one of his wives died by strang strangling herself with an electric cord. The other shot herself in the head. Asked whether he ever farmed the land, Lucy said, my dad was too lazy to farm. She recalls how her high school counselor had once asked her what she planned to do with her life. She laughed. She had never considered that she might be alive after high school. She spent as little time at home as she could, worked extra hours at the nearby convenience store. Studi eventually escaped by joining the U.S. Army, though she said she had hated her service. Studi remembers her father becoming violently angry after accusing her of stealing more than $16,000 from him, an accusation she now says is true. The Fremont County Sheriff's Office took a report on it, but no charges were ever filed. I did take that money. I've been honest about everything, and I'm being honest about this. I took it because it was the only way I knew how to hurt my father. I went back to Minnesota, where I was living then, and I gave it all away. Asked what she felt about her dad now, Studi said, I don't feel anything for my father, nothing at all. I wanted justice when my father was alive, but he's gone. I just want for the families some closure and proper burial. Studi is being treated as a witness and not a suspect in any crime, the sheriff said. Fremont Deputy Mike Wake said he grew up in the area and the town was rife with rumors about Donald Studi. Coming up, we just always kind of heard that, he said. Well, and then when Lucy Studi called me, I just went out there and looked. She kind of told me where she thought the well was. At, well, there was a well right there. It was just right where she said it was. No kidding. And her story, story never, ever changes. The landscape had changed since Lucy Studi was last on the site. So she was invited up from her home in the south for the investigation to see if she could spot the location of the well. She walked right to it. Wake said, she said, it should be right here somewhere. And I went out and found it. The cadaver dogs picked up multiple hits at the fence with the neighboring property where Studi said more bodies were buried. The sheriff said that he would get a warrant to further search there if needed. Sean Smith, who was, who with his father owns the land, grew up with the Studi children isn't surprised by any of the allegations. He too had heard stories and he remembers an odd call he had got about a decade ago. Out of the blue, this guy asked me if I had seen cow bones or people bones in the well. Smith, 55, told Newsweek. It was Donald Studi. The man said to Smith, take it back. Smith still kept listening. He told me, my daughter is always hallucinating and making up stories. And she told the authorities that I've got a body back there. Smith said at least two FBI agents inspected the well site more than a year ago and asked questions. The FBI Omaha office declined to speak to Newsweek or confirm that an investigation was taking place into Studi's accusations. Smith said the FBI has promised to return in August to dig up the site. Weeks ago, the FBI turned up and dug out part of the well. Law enforcement sources told Newsweek but what they found, if anything, is unclear. The Fremont County Sheriff's Department said it had not been notified ahead of time. Wow. The Sheriff's Office, with a budget of $1.8 puts the cost 
of boring the well at about $25,000 with a full excavation running upward of 300000 Quote, if I have to, I'm going to break the county and do it, the sheriff said of a full dig, adding that he would welcome FBI assistance. In addition to the Iowa DCI coming out Monday to inspect the area and possibly help in the effort, Ashdrop said that Omaha Police Department has offered its expertise since victims may have come from the Omaha area. Meanwhile, multiple agencies are searching records on Donald Stu Studi and missing persons to see whether any match Lucy Studi's description of the women, as well as at least two male victims, one in his 40s and one in his 20s, whom she says were buried in the well. Many of the women, according to Studi, were slender on the shorter side with cropped dark, dirty blonde or dark red hair. Newsweek was not immediately able to establish whether there had been matching disappearances in the area over the decade in question. Police said that if those murdered were transient or sex workers, it is possible that they were never reported missing. Yep. If bodies are found in Turman, advances in technology and re record keeping could now at least give families closure. Today, DNA is so popular and people are putting their DNA in systems trying to see their relatives. He said, now that could help just because we're a, a, put a putunk, I don't know, county of um, 8,500 people, we deserve just as much help as any, uh, any place else. For Lucy Studi, the search by the cadaver dogs finally seemed to be bringing her nearer to having her story believed and defining her own closure. As she stood on the ridge watching the dogs move from place to place, she said, this is what I've been telling people for 45 years. I told you. Wow. Oh, wow. You guys, I believe her. I mean, <laughs> right? There's a lot of articles. Um, I don't want to keep reading and boring you guys. Let's go back up to the top of this. We'll continue. I'll let you guys watch the rest of this uh, video on here. And then I've got a couple more I'm going to show you. But um, if you guys want me to go further into it, there are plenty of articles that I have that I've been reading up on with more details and such. Um, it's, it's interesting, but let me, um, I'm going to pick us back up where we were. All right. Saying, correct. That is correct. And that's an important part. And, you know, that is, she also has stepbrothers and uh, stepsisters and some of whom we've spoken to have also backed up Lucy's claim. So it is important to say that the stepsister, the other sister, excuse me, has not, um, well, she sees her father as, you know, wants to clear his name, but um, everyone else that we've spoken to, independent of Lucy Studi, uh, thus far has frankly corroborated uh, her story. And explain what you've uncovered about Don Studi, Lucy's father. So Don Studi is, is, you know, if this were 2022 Anderson, it's hard to imagine that he would have gotten away with the, the myriad of things that he did. I mean, we were able to establish that, in fact, he was, a, you know, a gambler. Um, and that he lived a life of crime. And while those things don't necessarily point to him being uh, a murderer, let alone a serial killer, speaking to people, you know, there is this pattern of both violence and another interesting thing, a pattern that says that he may have been connected to a criminal ring and potentially organized crime. And the area that investigators are looking at, how, how difficult is it? Because at some point there was a law enforcement officer who went out, couldn't find the well that she'd talked about. That was a while ago. Then Lucy was able to show other law enforcement the well. What, what is it like and what did the cadaver dogs find so far? So it is, as I would describe it, there is remote and then there is this. Um, to give you an idea, you drive through, there's no roads there. You're driving through essentially cow pastures that are with steep embankments. And you finally get to this spot that uh, the only way I can describe is it looks as if it were a crater. You actually have to descend into this, this canyon, this, you know, and that's where the well is. And one investigator described it to me that uh, if you were to bury a body, this would be the place to do it. I mean, you go down there, there's no sound, there's no one passing through there. So you have, you have unfettered sort of access and undisturbed ability to really do what you will there. And, um, one can imagine that a body buried there would, you know, likely go undisturbed because there's just no human traffic that goes through there. And so the cadaver dog dogs have sensed what? Yeah, so cadaver dogs, and, and this is a question we had for the science of the cadaver dogs. So cadaver dogs, as experts tell us, 
they're not going to pick up on any other scent other than the decay of, well, of human bodies. Now, in this case, the way that the cadaver dogs uh, approach this and the handler, he didn't go to the well and, you know, say, do you, you know, do they smell anything? Instead, he sort of took this grid approach and he let the dogs organically, we're watching this, organically go to places that interested them. And they naturally were drawn to both the well and another spot. So these are spots that Lucy independently, who was not guiding the dogs, had said that these were burial sites. So what happens next? I mean, are they going to dig at those spots? That is the hope. Um, as I understand it, Iowa, uh, as the winter is approaching, there is probably a window in which the ground freezes, which makes it potentially difficult. Um, but as the sheriff has told us, you know, he was expecting the FBI to bring in resources uh, earlier this year. And for some reason that we don't fully understand, that process uh, seemingly stalled while the sheriff was waiting for the FBI to come in. Uh, it's an incredible story. Uh, Naveed Jamali, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty interesting, right? Let me stop this really quick. Okay. And then I'm going to bring you over here onto another one. I mean, yeah, she indicated where, and you, you know what? Oh, sorry, I got a second thought that I'm going to jump onto. The fact of his wives uh, both supposedly having committed suicide, I had seen that prior to. Now I see that the way it was done was supposedly a gunshot wound and then vicious regulation. Mm, man, does that make me really wonder? It makes you wonder. And even if it, even if he didn't do it, right? It makes me wonder if he did. But even if he didn't, it goes to show these women probably recognized who he was. And that they were going to probably lose their life anyway. Like, you either have to live with the secret of being with this man that's a serial killer, or up until what? It's your your turn? <laughs> right? Like, that's a person you don't want to make anger. That's frightening. Frightening. I feel awful for those women. I don't know if they took their own life or if he took their life, but I feel terrible that they were involved with him and they lost their life in the end. It, because of him, I I fully believe it's because they figured out what was going on with him. I doubt that he let the children know and then, like, the wife was not knowing. I don't know, man. Oh, gosh. All right, let me push play on this one. Now to a mystery unfolding in the heartland. A woman claims her father was a serial killer and says he may have killed at least 70 people. Here's ABC's Andrea Fujii. This morning, the FBI is joining the search for potentially dozens of bodies after an Iowa woman came forward claiming her father was a serial killer. We are actively investigating this, and who wouldn't? Authorities are searching an area in Fremont County, Iowa, where a woman, now 53, says as a child she helped her dad, Donald Dean Studi, dispose of up to 70 bodies at the bottom of a well. She claims her father abducted and then killed them over a 30-year period. Most of the victims, she claims, were female sex workers and transients from Omaha. All we have is a woman came forward and told us a story about bodies and a well. Cadaver dogs have started searching the farmland that used to belong to the family. And though the well no longer exists, authorities say the dogs did react to possible human remains. We did bring a couple cadaver dogs. Cadaver dogs looked in there and, uh, or, you know, looked around the area. And they did indicate in the area. I'm not going to say it was right over the well or where, but they did indicate in the area. Studi died in 2013. His daughter tells Newsweek he made a living by smuggling guns and drugs. And according to court records obtained by Newsweek, Studi spent time in prison for larceny and drunk driving. The sheriff says this story has been a rumor for years, but since Studi is no longer alive, he says there was no immediacy to start the search. It's a big mission for a small county. The woman's older sister argues these allegations against her father are not true. Authorities will meet next week to discuss how to best continue the search for possible victims. Okay, I'm gonna bring you over to one more. And that's, yeah, her sister is claiming like, she just wants the father to get his name back and, and not, you know, be tarnished and that none of this is true. Um, here's what we know about the newly accused Iowa serial killer. 
this week will surely bring some more information to light um, about the late man from Fremont County, Iowa, who has been accused of murdering 50 to 70 women by his daughter. Who is Donald Dean Studi? Um, he lived in a remote wooded area of Green Hollow, north of Terman, or Thurman, excuse me, Iowa, a town of about 170. Not very big. Studi was born in 1938, passed away in 2013 at the age of 75. And according to the Des Moines Register incident reports from the Fremont County Sheriff's Office show a history of violent and erratic behavior in his past. Reports range back to the early 1990s, showing that he had threatened to kill the son of the second of his two wives. And according to Sheriff Kevin Astrop, I still don't know his name, there was an incident with a suicidal studi who, in the presence of deputies, shot himself in the arm. Chief Deputy Timothy Bothwell told the register that any time there was a call for law enforcement to Green Hollow. Officers considered it a two-caller or a two-car call is how they would put it on this, right? Um, they had said that in another one I had read too. Uh, what are the accusations? At least twice, Donald Studi's daughter, Lucy, told authorities that her father had killed people and buried their bodies in a 90-foot deep well on the property. The first documented accusation came in 2007 when Donald Studi accused Lucy of stealing money from him. Chief Deputy Bothwell said that he tried to look into the allegations but couldn't locate the well on the property. Quote, we thought that she was just trying to get dad in trouble or have us look at him because she stole his money. He told the, this, this, right? And I'll come back to this video here after. The second accusation came eight years after Donald's death, when she spoke with authorities in 2021. One of her stories included seeing Donald in 1976 or 77, with two other men taking a body out of the trunk of a car and hauling it to the well in a wheelbarrow. She told authorities that in 1979, she happened across a dead body near a cellar on the property and said that he then took the body to the well, where she also saw another body. Her estimates range from 50 to 70 victims being buried on the property, which, if true, would make him the most prolific serial killer in American history. Lucy's sister says she's lying. Studi's other daughter, Susan, refutes Lucy's claims about their father and says the dogs only hit on a stillborn infant sister who is buried on the property, as well as their family's golden retriever. <laughs> Uh, I'm two years older than Lucy. I think I would know if my father murdered, she said. I would know if my dad was a serial killer. He was not, and I want my father's name restored. His wives both died under strange circumstances. Some have questioned whether Studi's previous wives were murdered, but the police reports show otherwise. Both women's deaths were ruled a suicide, according to Daily Mail. It has been revealed that one wife's death was by gunshot wound and the other by strangulation. Man, I want to look deeper into those. I do. I do. And I can because right here I've got Daily Mail. I can, oh, I just did it by accident. All right. Well, it's okay. I'm not going to read it to you guys. Um, I will follow up. If you guys want to follow up, I will read it. I've now clicked on it by accident. I didn't mean to hit that button, but I now have the link open. So if you guys want to know um, deeper into that, let me know in the comments and I will do a second part to this. Um, and I'm going to keep updating you guys on anything that I hear on this, but What's the latest in the investigation? So Fremont County Sheriff Kevin Astrop, or whatever his name is, Astrop, confirmed that, they're, that they are investigating Lucy's claims that he did murder and that she knows where the bodies are because of having to, to help as a young child. I believe her 100% that there's bodies in there, the sheriff said. Law enforcement suspect that he lured women, possibly sex workers, from Omaha area to his five-acre property before murdering them. Ten years after his death, Studi's property is being searched by officials with assistance from cadaver dogs, which the Fremont County Sheriff's Office confirmed picked up scents on four different locations across the property. And this is the picture we saw. The dog handler, Jim Peters, with a Samaritan detection dogs sheriff and the sheriff both believe that there are human remains on the property because the dogs are trained to ignore animal remains so the sisters claim 
that it was a golden retriever is uh, out the window. More information should be available this week as the FBI helps with the investigation. And this report that I'm reading right now, this article just came out um, two hours ago. So this is as up to date as we have right now. And then, um, like I said, there's this article about two wives of dead Iowa serial killer who murdered up to 70 women over three decades, killed themselves before his death. One by strangling herself with an electric cord and the other shot herself. FBI joins investigation. So um, uh, yeah, if you guys wanna know more about it, if I find anything in it, I will um, let you guys know if, you, if you'd like to know. But I just wanted to bring this to you because I think that this is rather interesting, rather concerning. And that would be great if we can get some of these identities found, located, and even though they were never reported missing, well, that's because of their the work that they did, right? And they were away from family, estranged. And so if we can give their identities back to them and get them a, a proper burial, I mean, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And um, how horrific, if this is really true. It, it, I honestly, to this point, I believe it. I do. Um, <laughs> the fact that the dogs picked up on four different locations and they were the locations that Lucy had just pointed out prior to that. And the dogs had no indication, like, come here, let me walk you to this area. What do you think? No, they just let the dogs go and the dogs took themselves to the area. I don't know, man. It's very damning, very damning, very <sighs> wow. So anyway, I, I, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this. Um, and if there's anything about this you want me to go deeper into on it or cover further, um, just let me know. But I hope that you all have an awesome day or night, depending where you're at. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.